make a function. All right. Hear me through on this. Here's the thought of how, if I was doing this, how I would do it. <coughs> I would write this to store one set of values, and that is the value of a given currency in dollars. So I wouldn't store all nine of these values. I would store three values. All right? Because I know that 0.65 is how many pounds a dollar is. 1.5 is how many dollars a pound is. All right? They're reciprocals. So I can take the one and one over the one to, to come up with the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Let's get rid of this because this doesn't scale. I have, I still have an amount, a from, and a to. I'm going to convert two dollars, whatever the amount is, in the from currency. So whatever I'm given, I'm going to convert into dollars. Doesn't matter if I'm going from pounds to euros or yen to rubles, whatever it is, I'm going to convert it to dollars. Um, if you think that is U.S. centric, you could convert it to the price of gold or something like that, all right, if you prefer. But I'm going to convert it to dollars. I'm going to get a result. I'm then going to take those dollars and convert from dollars and pass it the currency I want to convert it to, the result of that function above, which I call dollars, to currency, to amount. So the to amount equals the from amount expressed in dollars converted to whatever my ending currency is. And that'll work. All right? So this is my convert function. Now, I have a choice. All right? I can either say, all right, I've planned this enough, and I can accept on faith that I can write these functions to convert two dollars, convert from dollars, or I can plan those out. All right. Well, again, let's plan those out. <clears throat> convert two dollars will look something like this. I'll have an amount and a from currency as my argument. Rate equals get the conversion rate of the from currency. Result equals the amount times the rate. Then I return the result. Convert from dollars, it's going to do something like this. It's going to get a dollar amount and a two currency. It's going to get the rate going to pass it to two currency, and then it's going to say result 
equals amount divided by rate. Now again, this isn't something that anyone tells you. This is something that's discovered if you look at the data and study it and think about it and plan it. I would defy anyone but the sharpest programmers in the world to sit down and start banging away at the keyboard and come up with a solution that is scalable and maintainable and so on. Now, the get rate function, we're going to give it a currency and it's going to tell me what the dollar rate is. That function probably should be called get dollar rate. I'll change it when I write it up. All it's going to do is it's going to look and it's going to return one of these values. Now, that I could write as three if statements, and maybe that's good enough for today. Or I could make an array of rates and search through the array for that value. So there's a couple of things I could do with that. All right. For today, it might be enough just to make a if statement with three if statements. But again, probably a better way to do it would be to have two arrays, the currency name and the rate, and loop through the arrays, look for the currency name, and then use the corresponding rate. If we have time, we'll do that. If not, that can be an exercise that you do. All right, now we are ready to start coding. And the good thing is, the good news is, is this including my reminiscences of childhood, all right, only took us a half hour to think this through and to sketch this through before we started coding, all right? And the coding should then become pretty straightforward, all right? In my mind, writing programs is sort of like fighting two battles, you know? Um, generally speaking, one is better if one fights one battle at a time, all right? It's funny. I think, I think I have, I have two daughters, and I think they discovered that as an early, at an early age, you know? If I was annoyed at one of them for doing something wrong, the other one could kind of get away with stuff, right? Because I couldn't yell at both of them at the same time. Right? I couldn't fight those two battles at the same time. All right? So if one, if I was annoyed with one of them for room a mess, not doing their chores, whatever, the other one could slack off a little bit. And while I'm fighting that battle, I'm going to be distracted and not worry about the little bit of chicanery that they're, that they're getting involved in. Same thing with programming. In programming, the battles, the two battles are this. One, figuring out what to code, and number two, figuring out how to code it. All right? So what the code should do, and then figuring out the statements in whatever programming language you're using to do it. That's your two battles. It's best if you fight those separately. All right. Now we're ready to open up Visual Studio and start making our form and making our class and so on. Yeah, we'll keep that up, we'll just minimize it. You might ask, how would I even think to do it that way? As I said, you know, you do it as a result of planning, but how do you figure it out? One thing you do when you're doing this is you start looking for repetitive code. So, for example, in my initial brute force case, I had a series of six if statements that all kind of looked the same. All right? That should be a tip-off that it could be done better. And there should also be a tip-off that if I added a fourth, fifth, sixth currency, things would start getting real hairy real quick. All right. So, let's go in and let's create our empty website. And let's call it currency. Go and create. 
create our form. And I won't spend tons of time on this, but I will lay it out like I said I was going to. I'll go and make a UL. And I want to grab a drop down list and pop it there. Now I'll go in and I will give these meaningful names from amount. From currency. And then in my other LI. Now we have to give values to these uh, to the drop down. Now I'm not going to go in and add validation to it. I, I think we all have a pretty good idea how to do that. In the interest of time, I'll, I won't do that. I'll go in and um, add items to this. Add. Remember, the text is going to be what the user is going to see. The value is going to be what the script is going to see. Oops. standard abbreviations, you know, um, and, and so I'm just going to use them there. As I said before, um, unfortunately, because we're not using database interactivity yet, we are going to have to go in and uh, repeat that, those values for the second dropdown. If there was a database table that had those in, uh, it would be great. All we'd have to do is, is grab those values once and bind both drop downs to it. But we're not at that point yet, so I'll go in and manually re-enter those in.
Now, I'm going to go and run this just to make sure the interface looks the way that I would like it to. We'll go and we'll get rid of the text on here. And let's make these the same size so that things line up right. All right. Not an elaborate interface, but I think a, a pretty cool interface. We'll run this. Of course, nothing's going to happen when we click the button, but that's okay. We can at least <coughs> make sure that everything lines up the way that we wanted it to and um, that we're ready to go. All right. <coughs> now let's go and create our class. So I'll go up under File, New, File, Create a Class. And we'll call that currency. All right. In general, to use this type of item, you should place it in there. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with it. All right. Now I start defining my functions. Now, unfortunately, we can't see them because they're behind them, but I have. I think I have four functions. My first function is called convert. And it accepts as an argument what? Um, oh, sure. Accepts as an argument um, arg. Um, to amount as double arg it should be an arg from amount arg from cur as string arg to cur String. And then it returns a double. A oh, public function. My mistake. All right, there we go. So there's our there's our function, our, our first function. What does the by val do? The by val? Yeah. There's two ways that you can pass um, arguments to a function: by value and by reference. For primitive values such as numbers and strings and all that. Typically, you want to do by value, where you actually pass a copy of that value to the function, but you don't pass a reference to the original source of that value. So if I change arg from amount in this function, it's not going to affect anything in the outside world. If I did by reference, if I changed it, then it would affect something in the outside world. So, my other function were, I'm going to make these private. Why am I making these private? Because these are sort of intermediary functions, <coughs> right? These are sort of just working functions. The only one I want the outside world to communicate with is that convert function. I have my convert function, I'll let anyone call that, so I make it a public function. These sort of intermediate functions do a process specific to this class, and I don't think I want to expose them to the outside world. And typically in object-oriented terms, they use that word, the methods that you expose, the methods that you make available to the outside world. So I'll make a private function, and what did I call the one? Convert $2 and convert from dollars.
in this function accepted an amount Also add a convert from dollars, which had the same signature. And then I had a get rate. Or actually we'll say get dollar rate. And this will accept an arg amount. No, this will accept a currency. And it will return oops, a, a, a double. All right, so I have the signature of all my functions. Does everyone get the private public distinction? Those three functions are just sort of working functions. They're intermediary steps. I don't want anyone outside of this, fun, uh, of this object or this class to call those functions, so I'll make them private. The only function I want the outside world to be able to call is this public uh, function. So let's go in. Oh, that should be R. That should just be dim. Just defining a couple variables here. Did you make the S in dollars a dollar sign? <laughs> no. It, the, the, the crosshairs was over yeah, top of it. That'd be cool. I'm not sure if it would let me do it, but. was straightforward, right? Because I already planned it out. Uh, the only issue I had is I had to remember what I wrote there because I can't see the board right now. But, you know, if you were doing this and you had sketched out on a sheet of paper, it's straightforward. I didn't think when I was writing that. I just thought of the syntax of VB and making sure it was right and making sure all that because I planned it out all in advance. Now, at this point, we could have, we could do some, some very basic what I call stub functions, it just return values of one for, for the dollar amount, just to make sure that the interface works and all that. We're not going to do that at this point, but we could. And we could test it with just some hard-coded values. All right. You could also write this with without defining variables and just, you know, but again, sometimes 
trying to write very terse code makes it hard to read, so we'll, we'll lay out each uh, step. Convert from dollars, it's going to look the same, except we decided that we're going to multiply by 1 over the rate. Now here's where we could do uh, a good job and write an array and loop through it and all that. For now, I think it's sufficient to um, just do an if statement, or a series of if statements. up to you to comment this if you wish. That's a good way to go and understand the code is to go and try to comment it to make sure you understand each line. Um, there are those that say you should comment your code before you start writing it. Write all your comments and that's giving you a little script of what your instruction should do. All right. The rate for pounds is 0.65. And the pound for euros is 0.74. There are those who would argue, and then I'll return the, 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 the result. There's those that argue that, you know, There are those that would argue that, gee, those if statements, you could have an if and else. You know what? That's minor inefficiencies. I ain't going to sweat those details. I'll, I'll, I'll trade a teen, teeny bits of, of uh, efficiency for readability any day. All right. Now, let's see if this works. This would be a great, you know, a great theory, right? Let's see if this actually works. So we'll go and... One dollar is how many pounds? Oh, I didn't call the function. All right. <laughs> yes, I was doing that to, to see if you were paying attention. No, I, I just forgot to call the function. Now we have to hook the two things 